What's happening, party people? Happy Motivational Monday. Welcome to Episode 8, Network Marketing Adventures. Today, we're going to talk about trimming the fat. When I was a kid, I used to eat bacon, like from a pig. Yeah, I was eating that bacon. And I would always take off the fat and cut it off with my knife away from the bacon and eat the most meaty part of the bacon. I would not eat the fat. And I don't know where that came from. I think I was born with that. Uh, probably came from some of my, my father's uh, clean, cleanliness and or, you know, OCD-ness and all of that. But trimming the fat is about looking at aspects of your life and identifying those things that are serving as distractions. Here's a core question for you. How many times in your life have you allowed life to get in the way? How many times in your life have you allowed life to get in the way and you set your mind to a goal, a specific outcome? And as soon as you make that decision, that is when you lose your job. That is when your relationship goes south. That is when you're having trouble with your family or your children. That is when a loved one gets sick. That is when you have to deal with your own physical ailment. That is when all of these other elements are calling and begging and screaming for your attention, which will force you to create a story, a rationalization as to why now is not the right time. Because I have these other things going on, these other obligations, therefore I'm going to have to put my goals and dreams on the back burner because I'm allowing life to get in the way. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you start looking at things in your immediate circle, the things that you are consciously devoting time, energy, effort, and attention to, and figure out which of those things is taking you away from your outcome and which of those things is pushing you toward it, you can start making different decisions and start putting safety rails in place for your success. Now, a safety rail works like this. Let's say my son has homework and he's only in first grade, so he's not gonna have homework anytime soon, but let's just say he did. And I know that from the time he gets home until bedtime, we're going to have to carve out time for homework. Well, guess what? I have to create a schedule so that he understands between six and 7 p.m. We're going to dedicate that to homework time. If more is needed, we'll figure that out. But let's say we block out that time. And then what I do before 6 p.m., from 4 to 6, and then from 7 to 8, I'm focusing on my outcome. Whatever that outcome may be, I might be training for a marathon. I might be working on a promotion at work. I might be working on a promotion in my business. I may be focusing on increasing more sales. I may be focusing on identifying more business partners. Whatever the task or outcome is, that is when I am organizing specific allocated slots so I can put time, energy, and effort towards my outcome. Here's what typically happens for most people, and I've been there myself. We will set the intention of an outcome, <coughs> and then the, uh, my child comes home, and I have no schedule. I'm not organized, and I spend a lot of time uh, cleaning up messes, doing domestic stuff, kitchen, preparing dinner, laundry, because I have no schedule. I have no intention. There's no purpose to what I'm doing. And then we do the homework. We work on that, but it's not for an hour. It could be longer. I have no sp specific focused intention. And I look up, it's bedtime. I get him to bed and now I'm kind of tired from the day. And I'm like, well, maybe I'll do a little bit. And instead of really having that organized, focused attention, I've allowed life to dictate my schedule instead of me dictating the schedule to life. Life is going to happen and life happens to all of us. There's going to be things that are unexpected, things that pop up and we have to make choices and decisions as to how we're going to handle those things. But that's an example where you can look at and say, man, I looked up and two years have gone by and I really haven't finished the manuscript to that book. Two years have gone by and I'm not at my fighting weight that I committed to two years ago. Two years have gone by 
and I really haven't gotten my business off the ground the way that I want because you haven't made it a priority. You haven't taken the time to trim the fat. Now, when you look at the people that you're spending time with, who are you becoming? Who are you staying as a result of the people that you're giving your time, energy, and effort to? So when you look at something like that, there are some people that you're spending hours with that you should be spending minutes with when it comes to you achieving your goal. There are some people that you're spending minutes with that you need to spend an hour with because they're going to elevate you, they're gonna make you uncomfortable, they're gonna challenge you, the status quo, they're gonna get you out of your comfort zone, they're gonna push you to that next level. And so when you begin to evaluate who these individuals are, how these relationships shape up and shape you, you can start to become much more efficient and how you're spending your energy because you're starting to trim the fat. Now, you might be having some activities that are distractions. For example, this weapon of mass distraction that I'm holding in my hand right now, we understand that this is Grand Central Station. It serves as a, a box of communication. It serves as a window into other people's lives through social media. It serves as a place of entertainment. It serves as a scroll zone. You can go down the rabbit hole of scrolling and the algorithms will continue to put things in front of you and put things on your feed to keep you online because the entire schematic of social media is designed to distract you from your life so you're focusing on what they want you to focus on, which is other people's lives and other people's content, including my own for that, for, for, for that matter. So I'm not excluding myself, but I am saying this. When I'm posting and when I'm putting things up, it's for your success. It is specifically designed for you to internalize and then execute on so that you can get closer to your goals. I submit to you that the majority of things that are popping up on your timeline on social media, it's not there for your success. It's not there for a better outcome for you. It's there for your entertainment and distraction. So I'm going to be the exception to the rule of social media. I'm not here as a distraction. I'm here to make sure that you stay on point and stay on course by helping you with today's topic of trimming the fat. So maybe you're guilty of getting on Instagram or Facebook or TikTok and instead of being on there for two to three minutes to post some positive, meaningful content, you end up on there for 30 minutes because you're looking at other people's stories and you're scrolling and you got sucked into the scroll universe and now you've wasted 30 minutes of your life that you will never get back and there's been absolutely nothing that you have consumed that's going to propel you forward towards your goal and your outcome. As a matter of fact, more, t more often than not, what you're consuming is not even going to help you define what your goal is for you. For you. So... If you're guilty of that, this is a place where you can trim the fat. You can say, you know what? I'm going to put myself on a timer. I'm going to set my phone. I'm going to set my alarm so that when I get on to these particular platforms, I'm going to allocate 15 minutes total. So I'm here on Facebook. I'm here on Instagram. I'm here on LinkedIn. I'm here on TikTok. But timer sets. As soon as it goes off, I'm done. So I know automatically I'm programming myself to what? Trim the fat, not waste time. That's an example. Maybe you have a bad habit of eating food that you know is not good for you. Maybe you're eating too much bread. Maybe you're eating fast food. Maybe you're consuming a lot of sweets and sugary, fatty foods. Maybe you're drinking too much. So you can trim the fat on those things that you know are not serving your highest, greatest self. And if you want to have a cheat day, that's fine. I don't believe in absolutism where you just cut everything out forever. I have cheat days myself. However, if you know that you've developed and cultivated some bad habits, then give yourself today the opportunity to trim the fat, to make a different choice, a better choice for your outcome. And that's where discipline comes in. You see, a lot of people have this idea of being in better shape, having better fitness, having a better physique. They see things on on social media, unfortunately, where there's a lot of airbrushing and touch-ups and all of that, and they idealize what they should look like instead of appreciating their body for what it is, but just focusing on getting in better health, better fitness. I'm not really talking about what you look like. I'm talking about what you feel like 
and your desire to get better at uh, peeling away the layers, okay? I would rather you be healthy aerobically than aspire to look like some, some idealistic physique that may not be for you, okay? You can get in phenomenal shape. You can absolutely reduce your body fat, right? You can absolutely do that. And you will feel a hundred times better. And when you feel better, you look better to the outside world because they can see your mojo. You're shining from the inside out. I've seen all kinds of incredibly beautiful, sexy people, all shape, sizes, and weight classes, and it has nothing to do with them looking like some picturesque idea or ideal, but they look like themselves as their best self. And that's what we're talking about here. <clears throat> so if you trim the fat on some of the foods and you start putting in higher quality foods, more greens, drinking more water, having more fiber, finding out what your superfoods are according to your blood type, and you start exercising consistently and challenging yourself and doing some sort of vigorous exercise three to four times a week, get those capillaries going and, and getting those uh, secretions out of your body. Because it, when you sweat and you move and you get your heart rate up, you're, you're literally pushing the toxins out through your sweat glandules. So that, that's a beautiful thing. And that's what we call trimming the fat. So maybe instead of watching two hours of Netflix, you can watch an hour of Netflix and then read for an hour. That's trimming the fat. So there are, there are places and spaces in your life and there are people in your life that you may have to love from a distance. So perhaps they're not deserving of more of your time because they don't aspire to anything. They're content. They've parked. They have no aspirations or ambition for anything better than where they're at and you want to go to a different level. You want to go to the next level because you know deep down in your heart there is more for you. That's called trimming the fat. And it doesn't mean that you don't love those people. It just means you're making you a priority. Now you start to identify other individuals who are just as hungry as you are because you're vibrating at a different level. And the next thing you know, you start to encounter other higher level beings because you've increased your antenna and your attention to those things. Therefore, you begin to attract like attracts like. Who am I becoming as a result of this relationship? Who am I becoming as a result of me spending time with these individuals? There are some people that you're spending hours with that you only need to be spending minutes with. There are some people that you're spending minutes with that you could use an hour with. There are some people that you haven't even thought of getting in touch with or spending time with. And guess what? I'm not even talking about in the company of. Maybe there are some individuals that you find inspirational and you're reading their autobiography. Maybe they're not even here anymore. They've passed on, but you can get inspired by their life story and example. Maybe you can watch some of their vi video presentations on YouTube. Now, again, I'm not encouraging you to spend all your time on, in the, 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 the social media space and the YouTube space, but there's a time and a place for everything. And if you focus on trimming the fat and being efficient with how you spend your time and how you allocate your energy, you put, a, put yourself on a timer. Let me get 10 minutes of positive content. Let me get 30 minutes of positive content to start my day. And then boom, I'm doing the work, the income producing activities. I'm doing the work in the gym. I'm doing the work to get my promotion. I'm doing the work to build my business. I'm doing the work to better my relationship. I'm doing the work to be a better father, a better husband, a better parent. I'm doing the work to be a better leader in my community. This is all about trimming the fat. Some of you all have allowed excess into your life. And that excess is weighing you down because you've gotten comfortable. How many of you have seen people walking around and they are, they're morbidly obese and you can tell they have absolutely no intention of doing anything about it. Now, they didn't wake up that way. It didn't happen overnight. People don't make wrong turns and then all of a sudden their life goes to crap. It's a series of bad decisions over and over and over again over an extended period of time. And then you find yourself in a hot mess. So if you want to get out of the hot mess, you got to do something different. And it's, you're going to have to do it different consistently over a long period of time. If it took you 15 years to get into a hot mess, it's not going to happen overnight. You got to make consistent choices day in and day out. 
and then experience the compound effect of making better decisions. Darren Hardy has a great book called The Compound Effect. Uh, there's another book called The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. It talks about how when you make the right decisions over an extended period of time, it adds up. See, if I go and eat a Big Mac today, no, no one's going to notice. My body's not going to change at all. I might feel a little heavy in the stomach, but nothing earth shattering is going to happen. And instead of going to the gym, I go to McDonald's, have a Big Mac, no big deal. If I do it again tomorrow, no big deal. If I do it again the next day, no big deal. But guess what? 30 days later, I'm heavier. I'm slower. I'm breathing heavier. 60, 90 days later, you won't even recognize me. I'll have multiple chins and I'll be a hot mess. However, if I go to the gym today and I don't eat the Big Mac, no one's going to notice. Not going to you know, feel it. It might be a little sore. I do the gym the next day, I do the gym the next day, I do the gym the next day. Not so much of a notice, but 30, 60, 90 days from now, you're going to notice. You're going to be like, yo, E, you, you're looking kind of tight, bro. You, you look like you're, you're getting in better shape, man. I, I like the vibe. I like your flow. So understand, ladies and gentlemen, that every single day is an opportunity for you to evaluate where you're at in your life, to look at where you're spending your time, your energy, and your effort, and identify those places where you need to trim the fat. I realized that I was scrolling too much. If you get me on one of those MMA scrolls and I keep seeing these highlight fights, I will be in that bad boy for half an hour and I will be thoroughly entertained because I love competition. But I had to catch myself and ask myself the question, Ed, is 30 minutes of this going to get you closer to your goal? Nope. Three minutes? Sure. I will allow myself three minutes because it fires me up, gets me competitive, and I transfer that competitive flow into my activities for the day, for my business, for my physical fitness, for my growth. And that's the difference because I trimmed the fat. I took 27 minutes of fat off of that scroll time, allowed myself three minutes, put the other 27 into my business and my growth. So think about it for your life. Think about it where you're at. You might be in a relationship that's pulling you down instead of lifting you up. You're going to have to have some crucial conversations. You might be listening to people and spending time around people who are not helping you to get to the next level because they don't want to go to the next level. And they got you in your comfort zone. You're in the cow pastures of life. Just, mm, you just graze it. You're not doing much. You're not aspiring to much. It's just status quo. Same thing day in and day out. Same story, different day. No, 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 no. You deserve more than that. Your dreams and your goals deserve and demand more of that. And it starts with you trimming the fat. And this is one of the bonuses. This is one of the benefits of the beautiful industry of network marketing. It challenges you to identify those places in your life that are taking you away from your goals. It challenges you to get clearly defined on your goals. It challenges you to hold yourself to a higher standard of accountability, and I'm going to do that for you right now. Trim the fat. Happy Motivational Monday. If you like what I'm saying, if you see some value in it, please share this message with other people. Subscribe to this channel. Uh, yeah, I'm learning now, right? I'm learning. And I uh, look forward to seeing you on the next one. Have an awesome and amazing week. Peace.